public comment? Anybody? Jerry? I was wondering, um, you used the term executive meeting or executive session. What I haven't heard that before. What is that? Is that public or non-public? Well, it depends. Uh, well, usually executives are non-public. I probably shouldn't have used the word executive. Uh, if these work sessions will, will be a public meeting. I just never heard the term. You hear public and non-public or workshops. And when I heard executive session, I wasn't sure what it was. Thanks. So your workshop would include uh, the public, the work session? Yeah. Because you, you did call it an executive meeting, which would have been non-public. Well, I, I misspoke. I apologize. And the manifest, it's my understanding, because we went through this before, has to be done in public. It has to be voted for and voted on in public. I remember that coming up as an issue. Voted on in public? Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be, could it be discussed and interpreted? And things like that um, during a work w workshop. That uh, I'm pretty sure we had this discussion, and it was determined that it all had to take place in a public meeting in front of the public. Uh, so, where the workshops are going to be public meetings, um, are you saying that maybe the manifest just needs to be approved and forwarded during a regular school board meeting? Well, your, your workshops that you're talking about are they? A lot of, most of the time workshops don't have minutes, per se, just a generalization. Is your workshop going to have minutes? Mm -hmm. So you could approve so. the manifest at the workshop as long as it was a public meeting. Okay. Thank you. Oops. Jerry? Do they apply training courses for the new board members still with uh, the New Hampshire Education Association. School Board Association, everyone signed up tonight. What was that meeting you guys had on Monday? Was that uh, emergency or? No, there was, there was not, no emergency. We the, the, the budget committee called the meeting, so the right. board thought it would be a good idea to have representation at the budget committee meeting. Yeah, we reviewed the uh, water district figures, right? The mm -hmm. hearing. Yep. That will land up being pretty much it. Yep. That's, like, what, that's what the email was that I got to review. That We do that every year. They have a public hearing for the water district and then they have their elections and their meetings and uh, usually we, we review those in April after the election, but we did it earlier this year. Right. And we also wanted to, to uh, remind the budget committee that with the uh, SAU withdrawal that passed the, the Warren article that the budget committee needs to appoint a budget committee member to the SAU withdrawal committee. Right. So I had contacted Tony Boda <coughs> and informed her that we were having that meeting to temporarily appoint someone and then um, also about the SAU withdrawal, appointing some budget committee member, and she told me that she would send out an email. Well, whether she did or not, I'm not sure. So that meeting was posted in uh, Milton mm. at the SAU office, and it was posted here. Oh, at the school. Yeah, I everywhere, everywhere that it's normally posted. I didn't see it online, and I didn't get a, I didn't get an email from Kathy with the agenda or the notice that that meeting was taking place. That's how I usually get notified is through an email, but I didn't get that, so I didn't even know that it took place. We're sorry about that. Sorry about that but it was on the board in the hallway. Right, well, we know that you guys meet the first and third Wednesday of every month, so we're pretty much acclimated to that. And so, um, you know, and like I say, Kathy sends me the agenda and sends it to Dave Lee, and I don't know if Ed gets it or not, but we always get, we always get a copy of the agenda and, and that, and I mean, if these, I don't know what you call it, it's emergency meeting, spontaneous, whatever it was, comes up, I mean, I wouldn't come down here every day and check the board just in case uh, an emergency meeting came up or check the website every day at like 8 o'clock or noon time or some other time of the day in case an emergency came up and you guys called the school board meeting, so that was just the only thing. I, I was just surprised to not get a email notification about it. 
was it. Terry, I don't know who else called it an emergency meeting. I think you're the only one calling it an emergency meeting. I don't know. It was unscheduled, I guess, or I don't know what it was. I don't know what, what, what it would fall under. What, I don't know what you call it. Well, my understanding is that <clears throat> Uh, you mentioned to me earlier that that uh, Kathy Vicky of my office, you spoke to her and she apologized saying that she didn't get an email to you and, and I apologize to you as well that um, <clears throat> there weren't uh, additional means beyond the, the regular posting uh, to get it out. Uh, it happened on relatively short notice. It was a very brief meeting on a single topic and I accept responsibility for uh, making sure that the public has an opportunity to know about meetings and, and attend them. So you have received uh, two apologies about this, and I don't know that there's much more that the board can do at this well, point. Well, I think that the board should be aware of it because ultimately the responsibility to adhere to RSA 91 is it comes to comes to their responsibility. Yes, and they should know that that they may not be getting the best the best advice from our uh, superintendent. I think that's important for the board to know, and I think it might be important when they go to the. Uh, training for the school board that they could bring it up and they could look into it for themselves and make sure that they have the right information and make sure that, that maybe they'll let, let people know what's going on because that's a pretty big deal to us here in Wakefield. Criticism, and, uh, criticism accepted. Yeah, that's fine and, and uh, I, appreciate the, I appreciate the opportunity but I mean the, the board members should, should know that it's ultimately their responsibility and uh, we talked out in the hallway and, and uh, I don't think that you were aware of what the definition was in RSA 91 section 6 about what constitutes an emergency to have an emergency meeting. Uh, so if you want to change it from calling it an emergency meeting to calling it a, uh, some other name and so that it doesn't fall under the, uh, doesn't fall under the restrictions of, of the right to know law, that's, that's fine if you want to do that. And you call it whatever you want. I mean we have public and we have non-public and we have emergency meetings. I don't, I, I'm not aware of any other uh, topics. So I think that the board should be aware that, that they, they are responsible for what they do and, and that they should probably make sure that they know what's going on and, and make sure that they do things properly because they may not, they may not get the best advice from the, from the SAU down in Milton. And that's my only point. Thank, Thank you for your comment. Minutes of the last meeting. Another public comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Ed? Does, is the new website going to have a calendar on it? <laughs> Scott is the one who attended those meetings. Yes, the new website will have a calendar. The, the SAU website is up and almost fully functional, and the uh, the district ones are forthcoming. Follow. Up. Good. Is it possible that the uh, is it possible that the website can have an email alert? Is it built into that so you can? sign up for email alerts if you want to and then when the person puts the alert out it'll go to that list so if you're not on the list you're not going to know at least do you, do you know it Scott? does have one because i signed up oh okay so you can sign up and somebody actually goes and updates it yeah was that sent out this time or no. is that not working right now? uh i was told that uh, the person that is will, will be responsible for posting that on the website hasn't been trained yet to do so and so she apologized for that, and, uh, but it does have a sign up, so I, I imagine that will function at one point. Yeah, I know there was discussion today with uh, Back Bay and the individuals who are going to be responsible for posting, so that's it's progressing. Yeah, please, please get your name, your name in. And that would solve the problem in the future. Thank you. Good solution. <laughs> um. I think Bid's the only one that can make motions on these, but we weren't members. Um, I don't know. I, I'd like to, I, maybe I should have done this a new bit, but I'd like to do, um, <coughs> once again, I, I, you know, the, the rumor mill seems to be rearing its ugly head once again. I don't, wouldn't understand why, but, um, you know, uh, it's just, it's getting out of, out of hand. And I just, it, it, you know, have an understanding that whoever's, and I'm sure it's probably all of it, or mo most, if not all, is probably not true, but just as long as we have an understanding, you know, that it needs to stop. And 
hopefully, like I said, what what I'm hearing, I don't know if any of it, <coughs> anybody else is, but just as long as we have an understanding that it stops. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Is this something I said? No. Okay. I, should I address? I I can address this. I was accused by a past board member of being in this building every day and wreaking havoc with the teachers and the staff. And I've been in this building twice this academic school year for um, to distribute flowers as well as to read in a kindergarten class for Read Across America, so I have not been in here meddling. And I've also been accused of meeting behind closed doors with Jay for the past six months, um, evilly plotting, as she said, um, a crazy takeover of the board, which is not me, crazy has not happened. Hmm? Crazy takeover. Crazy takeover. Um, the first time I was in Mr. McIntyre's office was Friday with Mr. Rollette. Other than sitting here and having a hand shaken, I have never spoken with you before. And um, the rumors are just not nice. And if anyone has something to say, they should be grown up enough to talk to somebody and not listen to rumors. I'm here for the good of the kids and the good of the district. And the, the biggest problem of, of it that I see it's probably the same people who were sitting up here stating the same thing last year or the year before. And so it just needs, as long as we have an understanding, it needs to stop. You know, if there's people doing things that they shouldn't be because they're no longer board members, you know. Uh, I mean, I've heard rumors about some things that y you've been stating. Like I said, I, I'm sure that they're not true. But I'm I'm getting people I telling me that still. you're that you're out there, you know, saying all these things, and it's just it. I know. work I work for the board, and for the students of Wakefield. So right. whatever, whatever, I mean, there are there are rumors of of me um, when when I've referred to uh, and and basically an eye for an eye mentality of of infighting. There are rumors out there that I have said it's, it's karma that, that, that has, you know, people are, are in bad situations because of karma, which I don't believe, so I certainly wouldn't have said. There, there uh, at times has been a culture of, of uh, infighting that I think we've all seen. It's not a, it's not a secret. And I have in an um, in individual setting suggested that we need to get over the infighting and we have to stop fighting and start working together for kids um, but uh, the you know rumors uh, that I have been involved in other things are colluding with members of the community and and if members of the community want to come in and talk to me that's my job so if you had come in and talked with me there wouldn't be anything wrong with that it just hasn't happened <laughs> so I'm not sure I'm not sure where stuff is coming from, but it's uh, people in, in the public have certainly seen through the last eight months that the administration has been, you know, staying out of matters that aren't for us. The board polices the board. The board is responsible for the board, and our job is to support the board. It's not to get involved in disagreements. Our job when there's disagreements is to stay out of it, um, and that's not always easy to do. So that's what we're trying to do is focus on students and the board is focusing on policy and uh, we look forward to continuing to teaming with the board. Thank you. Comments by the public. So. I had a phone call last Thursday from a former board uh, member telling me basically what you just said, uh, what Bonnie just said, and that uh, somehow I was in cahoots with you. You've been going... Uh, seen Jay for the last six months in his office, that I have in, been in cahoots with you and two administrators and a town employee to go after a certain member on the board. I don't know where this is coming from. I let me tell you it's not for me. We know that. Okay. As long as you know that, that it's not coming for me. Because I was told the same thing. And I said, who is starting these rumors? He said, absolutely crazy. 
But on another or I should say, I know that. Thank you. I appreciate that. On a, another subject, I'd like a clarification. When you're talking about uh, work sessions, what's the difference between a work session and actually starting your regular meeting earlier? I mean, what would be the difference? I think it's just basically trying to help streamline the regular meetings, that's all. Just so we can maybe, you know, there's been a change in the, in the hours because some members can't get here um, because they work out of state or, or whatever. I think it's just something, because there is a lot of work here, and I think it's just, it was just an idea to possibly help with the new, the new, uh, the new hours that the board is going to be meeting, that's all. Uh, okay. So it might be that the work session or workshop is on a different date right. as, as opposed to a regularly scheduled school board meeting and just opening up earlier, doing some work earlier on that same day. But it would still be a public meeting. Sure. Still a public meeting. And, I mean, the chairman was willing to be there or not be there. But the, Hopefully so they're there. The general public could see. Yeah. I just wondered what the clarification was. It seems to me it's just starting a meeting earlier or... Well, it's the date. Well, I think it's to, to help to to help to try to stop the midnight meetings is basically what what it's really designed for. I I've never been a fan of the midnight meetings, and and to be perfectly honest with you, I've been to too many of them, and I would just like to see them stop. I can't disagree with that. My experience of the difference between the two has been that when work sessions have been called, they're typically informational right. and not, um, not decision making. So typically right. there are not actions at work sessions. What we haven't uh, done this year, partly because of the length of the meetings, is spend any time with training. I mean, it would be, it would be great at, an, at, you know, perhaps at each work session, we could devote 15 or 20 minutes or half an hour to, to, uh, you know, updates on school law. You know, let's talk about 91A. Let's have let's have a discussion about about content uh, or about uh, instruction, about what is it that makes a a good reading program. The board typically doesn't have time to just get information to help it it do its job, and that's something that you can do at a at a workshop if you start early and, and not have to go quite as late during the board meeting. So that's what I had interpreted. Uh, one other thing. Uh, has anybody asked the parents whether or not they would want to send their kids to Kingswood if we supplied transportation? I mean, has that ever been done? That little, I mean, you're going forward wanting to have an option, which you actually do right now. But how many kids would actually go to Kingswood? What do the parents say? I mean, I don't know if they've ever been asked. I mean, is that a good idea to ask them? I would say first and foremost. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Do the kids want to go there? <laughs> well, I, that's, I think that was part of the process of us going over there and then, you know, requesting to, you know, set something up with the superintendent to see how many kids that, you know, they'd be willing to accept, yada, yada. Yeah. And now we have to talk to Rochester to see if, because that will change that area agreement, to see if Rochester will agree to, say, 50% of our kids, because I, I do... No, I've heard a lot that people want, want an option. Kids want to either go to, some kids may want to go to Spalding, some kids may want to go to Kingswood. So, I mean, I would definitely think that that would be, once we, you know, talk to Rochester, I think we'll find out a lot at that area agreement when, you know, see what Rochester's thoughts are of how many kids they would actually, will they allow 50% of our kids to go elsewhere? If they do, that, that would change it. And if they did, and I would absolutely be, you know, trying to get a bus to go over to Kingswood. But asking them if they would allow 50% when maybe we don't even have 50% that would be wanting to go, even if there's transportation, seems a little putting the cart before the horse. And I think as a matter of respect for the number of years that you've been working in partnership with Rochester, I'm, my recommendation is that 
you, you talk to your current partner first and let them know that you have an interest in exploring other options. I, I think given the length of the relationship and the amount of support they've provided to Wakefield students, that giving them the first opportunity seems to me like the respectful approach. I was just on uh, Priscilla's comment about the bus, you know, and, and you'd want to talk to parents about whether or not they'd be willing to bring their kids to a certain bus stop or pick up to head that way, or, or would we dedicate a, a bus to go all around town dedicate to pick up bus. the kids? I mean, that's what I, if a bus was dedicated, the kids could either go to Kingswood or they could go to Rochester. Where would parents want their kids go, to go? Mm. If you've got 75% of them that still say Rochester, I mean, that's pretty telling. When you could, you know, through the junior high, just pass the parents. Any other public comment? Sure. Yeah, I was curious, at the last meeting of uh, March 6th, there was a discussion about uh, when you guys swore Ralph in, and we weren't just sure whether he was still on the budget committee or school board or both, and I, I thought that uh, Jay was going to check into that before this meeting. I, that was the last board. I don't know if they kept up and checked on what the what the determination was on that. Uh, the, um, I got in, informal input on that. I didn't opt to spend money on, on attorney time for that. The informal uh, message was that it's not uncommon for people not to resign until they know they've been elected to another board, but the expectation typically in New Hampshire is that it be done immediately upon joining a new board is removing oneself from another board. But I reiterate that I did not uh, go to council on that. I asked for what typical practice was in New Hampshire. Okay, we, we usually, at the town uh, level, we usually check with the local government center because <clears throat> we're members of that and their staff lawyers don't charge us for, uh, for advice. So we can, get, we can get information on things like that without, uh, you know, without paying for a, a lawyer. But uh, I remembered at the meeting that, you know, we were going to check into that. I was just yeah. curious what the... Uh, what the outcome had been, but um, I think I was wondering about the website. I was wondering, is that something that is that something that Back Bay does? They they do the website and the updates because uh, I noticed the SAU uh, website has has this meeting for the 20th posted, but it didn't have the meeting posted for the 18th. So is that something that, that Back Bay does? You you give them the information and then they do the updates on the website. Well, that's that's what I was referencing earlier. Is that is that today, I think that's right, so days get fuzzy, was, was when there was the first meeting between Back Bay and the two individuals in the office who are, they are training to post, so that when things come up, they don't have to go to Back Bay and then get put on, that we can post it right from our office. So that training started today because our intent is to not have to do everything through them. In answer to your original question, does Back Bay do the website, the answer is yes, however, it wasn't part of their original contract. Uh, that was something that came on later. They, they uh, originally were, were going to look at the website, were going to try to help us tweak it, and when they got in and looked at it, they said, the way it's been constructed, uh, it's been constructed in so many different pieces, so many different styles, so many different structures, that really you're going to be better off taking it down and starting over. So we identified um, additional resources and they actually had to identify a person, a, a person to do that who was not on their staff who they brought on to work on it. So it was an additional responsibility that came to Back Bay. Uh, fall, Andrew, is that right? Late fall, mid fall? Yeah, it was just before the holidays. Just before the holidays, yeah. The, the, uh, they had tried to tweak it and make it work and eventually just said, you know, you're going to be better off if we just start from scratch. And, and the original, the, the ultimate intent is for us to be able to have the staff capacity to do all those updates so they're, so they're really timely. Well, that's what the town's trying to do, too, and I'm surprised because I've done updates on websites, and we just built one for, the, for our local pay channel, so I don't, I, they make all these things more user-friendly. I don't understand why, yeah. it, why, it, why it's so difficult, uh, you know, for them to, to do that, but I've noticed a lot of, I've noticed a lot of problems that people seem to have with back pay through the last couple of years sitting here watching the meetings it, it seems that it seems that back bay uh, as an organization seems to fall short of, of all our expectations on uh, a lot of different uh, a lot of different areas um, but um, that's something the board will have to do but um, you mentioned uh, RSA 91 and talking about some of the training 
during some of the work sessions with the mm -hmm. boards and things. And, and earlier, Ralph said that I used the uh, phrase emergency meeting um, mm -hmm. because I didn't know what else it would be, uh, what else it would be considered. Because RSA 91 explains that you can have public, non-public, and you can have emergency meetings. Um, and they didn't have any any other classification, but. Uh, I did have the uh, definition of what they considered an emergency here, and I said it shall mean a situation where immediate undelayed action is deemed to be imperative by the chairman or presiding officer of the public body who shall post the notice of the time, meeting place, uh, such meeting as soon as practical, and shall employ whatever further means are reasonably available to inform the public that a meeting is to be held. So. Uh, they, they seem to have a pretty high standard for emergency or emergency meeting. So I mean, I think that if, if you're if you're going to have a public or non-public or an emergency meeting, and and they all fall under the care under the topics that are covered up by the law, I don't know that if you just you know take an emergency meeting and call it something else, that I don't know if that's necessarily a way to you know get around. Uh, following the following the law, so uh, you know to, to to the point that was why I was trying to use that, uh, trying to find out what that what that actually was considered, you know, because yeah, there's those three basic topics covered, and I was trying to figure out which category it fell into. Another resource you might want to look at is. I'm pretty sure it was four years ago. I think it was 2009 that the Attorney General's Office put out a document. It's about 90 pages long that gives a lot more interpretation of, uh, of the right to know law uh, because what's in the RSA, as you know, is very tight and yet there is case law and, and rulings that all relate to that. So that document is one that I have in my office and, and I've used that. My, my recollection of that uh, is that special meetings uh, are, are a category, but you, you inform me that it's not and I don't question your knowledge of the law, I'm going to go back and take a look at that AG's report because my recollection and uh, from prior experience is that special meetings don't, that special meetings can be called that don't have to be the ones that were regularly scheduled and they don't <coughs> constitute an emergency. So I'm, I'm going to look into that because I don't, I don't like to make mistakes uh, and you have, have suggested that one of them made, you've been very public about um, saying that the board might have gotten bad advice from me and I, I respect that. I'm not an attorney but I do my best, but I'm going to go back, and that's the document that I'm going to reference. Well, I, can, I can appreciate can I that. We always have legislative updates. I mean, every one of these laws yeah. have gone to court, and they've, they've, the Supreme Court and the State Supreme Court has, has made different rulings on, mm -hmm. on different ones, and I mean, I, I, think that, I think that the laws are pretty, are pretty, you know, they're open to interpretation, and I don't think they're quite as tight as, as you say they are, but, you know, when you call them a special meeting, I know that if you're going to call a special town meeting, you actually have to petition the superior court to get permission to you, to get permission to hold a special town meeting. So, I mean, emergency meetings and special meetings and these other things aren't just something that you just you know you know you just go and do. I mean, the law takes them very seriously. I mean, if you have to file the town has to file a petition with the with the superior court to get permission to hold a, a, a Mr. special town meeting, that's a pretty high Mr. level. May so I address important. something? Yeah. May I address Good. something? Good. Um, I know it's probably not appropriate, but I need to. Um, you brought up the fact about the swearing in, and I was concerned about that as well when you brought it up that night because I wasn't sure about the budget committee and the fact that you were still on. I did go back, and I did recall that three years ago when um, there was an opening on the board, and I believe it was when Barney left, um, and there was someone need to be appointed, I did go to that meeting with Judy Nason. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I believe that was also a meeting where Kim was also sworn in. And um, Judy was appointed. Mm -hmm. And they did swear her in right then, and she was a current member of the budget committee. And going back a couple of meetings uh, past that, it, it seems to be that that was common practice, that mm -hmm. only if they were offered that position that they would immediately submit their resignation. And, you know, I mean, I don't know whether, I know that's the way it's been done because I was there at that meeting and she was sworn in and then she took her place as soon as they came out of non-public, you know, at the table and then gave a resignation. So um, I checked you only because you questioned the fact of what Ralph was on the budget committee and it was the same thing three years ago as well. So I just want to know I checked on that and that's the way it was handled then too. 
well, it wasn't an issue. It, it all depends. It seems that this town of Wakefield has um, um, segments where it's okay at certain times for certain people to do certain things. And then a couple days later or months or years later, another segment may come in and do a, an identical action. And because the other segment might be offended or um, disgusted or... or or uh, disgruntled, um, that's when the problems arise. So it, it's just, you know, they're all growing pains. Eventually the town will grow up and, and uh, we'll have less time spent on silly issues like this. Right. Move a uh, motion to go into non public. Under. What, Jay, do you have your list by any chance? I just have my list. <laughs> Tuition request, so. Got you one and George. 